first. How's that? And then we'll tie it. Okay. Basically, it's a damselfly nymph imitation. Now, most guys, when they fish damsels, what do they do? They cast it out on an intermediate or a floating line, and they move that thing in. Generally, with a figure of eight retrieve, and yes, damsels do move. However, that said, they're not the quickest movers. A, a, a very effective way of fishing damsels is to actually fish them static. Like you do when you fish uh, midges, where you cast them out on a floating line, let it sink slightly, and you just drift them. And the fish picks them up on the drift. Static fontaine, popular technique. Cast to a weed bed, let the wind drift it just out, poof, every time. Poof. So, so you could fish these in conjunction with a, a team of buzzers, a couple of mayfly nymphs. You can move them, but they move very, very slowly. They're not like dragonfly nymphs that actually move. Doof, doof, doof. That have jet propulsion. Damselflies are slow movers. Um, but the one advantage is you generally always get them around. There will always be damselfly nymphs somewhere. Um, what you look for in a damselfly nymph pattern is you want a pattern that sparse, triggers the eyes. So you want sparse eyes, legs, even though when they swim, they fold their legs. But when we're fishing it drifting like that, then their legs are out. And they some species have long legs, like mega long, almost as long as the abdomen of the, of the insect. So, so this is just a very basic pattern, uh, nothing too complicated. Let's give it a bash. Charlie, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so what I do is I start off, are we on record? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I start off by just putting a base of thread on this hook shank. I do this with everything I tie. The standard shank. Pardon? I would prefer a longer shank, but because I'm tying this for Mr. Factor, he gave me that. But but a longer shank is, is great. But, I mean, it will work either way. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie in a little bit of a marabou tail. Now, what you want to do here is you want to keep things sparse. Don't, it's not a woody bugger you're tying, it's a damselfly. So, I go very thin on the tail. Just a couple of fibers, light and sparse. With a pinch strap, we just tie that in. Like that. See, just a couple of fibers, nothing too major. Come back with my thread midway, get a bit of copper wire. Where is my ah? Oh, okay, right, so tie in the copper wire. Come back there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use some marabou for the body as well. What you got to do here is select marabou with long fibers. Because if you don't do this, what you're going to find is you're going to run out of material for the body. Also, not too many fibers, more than you used for the tail. Cut them off with the base. And then what you're going to do is you're going to tie these fibers in at the tips. Why do I do that? Can anyone tell me? Taper, yes, so that you get that classic carrot shape. Other thing I want to ask is why did I make a bed of thread on this hook shank before tying? Anyone? Slips. Yes, otherwise things slip. So you have a base on which your materials can just hold on to. I do that for anything I tie, even deer hair patterns. Okay, so I just wind this around. <coughs> Till about there, tie it in, like that, snip it off, copper wire, now the copper wire I'm going to wrap towards me at a slight angle, so I'm cross ribbing this fly, this is basically just there for durability, so that this thing doesn't come apart, and when I get here, just give it two wraps, hold it, break it off. Tie that in there. Now, I've got a strand of flash boot. Let's give the pattern a little bit of flash. Tie that in there. OK, 
Okay, so you've got a bit of flesh. Now the next thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to take a partridge feather, or a partridge... Later. <laughs> you could have put the eyes in if you wanted to, but like, you know, me being me, I just do it whenever I want to do it. I mean, I don't really care. Fish don't either, as long as it's got bloody eyes. Okay, so, you've got a partridge hackle. What you want here is, you want a feather with Take lacquer over. mark. Don't have it, don't have it. There. You want a feather with nice marking, mm. right? How long must those fibers be? Can anyone tell me? No, about just a little bit longer than the gape would be cool. Okay? So you see, I strip a couple of fibers off over here. Along the shank, just clean that up for myself. So that's what I got going. I take my hackle plier, hold hold the tip of the feather like that, and then I'm going to stroke it back, these fibers, just very softly. Don't do it hard, you'll break the thing. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it in on top of the hook shank by the tips. Just like that. So what you'll get is you'll get that effect. Okay. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dub a bit of a thorax. Now, everyone knows how to dub, I guess. But there are two things one could do here. If you dub anti-clockwise, like I'm doing now, you'll get a tighter dubbed effect. Because what? Uh, let me just be careful there. Okay. You'll get a tighter dubbed effect. If you dub it clockwise, what actually happens is when you're winding it, the dubbing unravels slightly. So you get a looser dubbed effect. Which, either or, I tend to go tight. Because what you'll find is trout will loosen it out for you when they eat this thing. Hmm? Not when they, yeah, no, these things eat this. Okay, so you wait like this. Okay, so now you've got the thorax on there. Now the next step is to take this feather stem, pull it over gently. Just massage those fibers. Make sure that you've got more or less the same amount of fibers on either side. It doesn't need to be exact. Contrary to popular belief, fish can't really count. I once had a guy inform me that a mayfly nymph has seven abdominal segments and I'd tied eight. I told him to go speak to the trout because I don't didn't think they gave a shit. Okay, so there we go. So, so you get that. Hot sticks, eh? Now, it looks even hotter when we take the flash boo and check us out. Hold those fibers down, put the flash boo over it, and just tie it in. One or two wraps. So you got you got that. Yeah. Any questions? Okay. Now I'm going to tie in the eyes. Now back in the day when I started fly tying, we didn't have all these little beads and stuff that you buy nowadays. We had to physically go and melt nylon. However, that said, it wasn't all bad. The advantage with actually, and I still melt it, the advantage with melting nylon is you can get a better shape of eye. You can also get them smaller. Because I know the eyes are a trigger, but a lot of guys go a little bit overboard with the eyes. They tie them too big. So, um, so all you do is, you take a little piece of, uh, do you have a lighter, Charlie? I'll quickly demonstrate this one I'm here. Ah, buy a donkey, man. <laughs> Who said smoking was a bad thing? Okay. So all I'm going to do is, this is quite basic, but you take a little, a little length of mona like that, in a hackle plier, and you just, yeah. am I there? Yeah. Burn it on that side. Burn it on that side. Now, yeah. if those eyes aren't equal, or if you want eyes bigger, there's a trick you can do here. You can burn some more mono, like that, and you can literally add mono, and then melt 
and you can add it un until you get the shape you want to get. Okay? So yeah, I've got a, a ready-made pair of eyes. All I do is I just pop them on top of the hook shank and I figure of eight them in. Now you'll notice because of the hackle plier, that mona is nice and flat, so it ties in quite easy. Okay, now when most people dub eyes for damselfly nymphs, what they tend to do is they just do a figure of eight. But I did slightly differently. This is how I do it. Okay, so we dub that. Dub around each individual eye. As opposed to doing a figure of eight. The reason, can anyone tell me why I do this? <coughs> because I can, but why else? <laughs> Check at that. You see you get a flatter head. Look at the shape of the head. It's not this big ball. It's you get a flatter, more natural head. And when you're tying dragons, same story, guys. Okay, then we take this last little bit of flash over. Ties in, yeah, and I like koi. Now, what you can do, yeah, is it's actually cool if you. It's a bit long there, but I'll just cut this off slightly. If I half hitch this, yeah, just to help me out. Okay, now I can let this hang and leave it because I'm cool. I'm just going to cut this off like that, whip finish it, oh, couple of half hitches, never killed anyone, then, okay, and there you've basically got Quite a nice little damselfly pattern. Okay, let's just recap. What are we going for here? It's got to be slim, right? A mini duck, VSC. You want taper? You want legs? Check how they tie it there. That will also give it a nice profile. If a fish was looking from underneath up, they check his legs. Boof. You've got the eyes and you've got the flash. Especially when... I've only experienced this twice in my life, but if you get caught in a in a damselfly nymph migration, it's one of the best things on earth, where thousands of these things decide to all hatch at the same time, <coughs> and they basically swim just under the surface, and they swim to to sort of uh, bankside vegetation, reeds or whatever, and what you'll find is you'll fish on a floating line, like long, 18 foot leader, fine, slow figure of eight. You'll see the boil, you'll feel the fish, so you'll see him before you feel him. And you just knock him the whole afternoon. But it's not an occurrence which happens too often. If you, if you have it once in your lifetime, you did well. Yes? I find that when I fish dams, it's usually in the mornings that I catch fish and dams. Is that, yeah. is that a general thing? Well, it's quite normal. They tend to move when there's heat around. It's like you and I. Is jy nou koud is, waar ga jy gewees? In die bed, nee. Dit is kaai daar in die bed. Maar as dit warm is, nie in fokkie bed, jy gaat ek. And they are exactly the same. Any questions? Enige vraag? Lekker. Thanks. Okay, I'll give you guys hooks now. I just wanna... Pressing the wrong one, Charlie. Come on. Can't see from that. Mm.